Welcome. We're so glad you're able to join us today. And I'm excited to be introducing you today to Dr. Chloe Couturier. And we're going to be talking about negotiating past uh, or beyond Western medicine. So welcome, Chloe. It's great to have you here. Well, thank you, Cindy, for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be with you today. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to dig into the conversation. And for our listeners, if you don't happen to know, um, Dr. Chloe Couturier, is a, 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 brace yourself. She's got credentials coming out the wazoo. So she's a European certified osteopath. She's an upledger craniosacral therapy diplomat in the US. She's a medical Qigong doctor in, from China, graduated from the College of Medical Qigong, Henan University of Traditional Medicine, and the International Institute of Medical Qigong. And she's licensed by the Republic of China's Ministry of Health as a doctor of medical Qigong therapy in the Beijing Western District of uh, Medical Qigong Science and TCM Research Institute. She's a nationally certified advanced Qigong instructor, nationally certified as an EHPC energy healing practitioner in the clinical Qigong division. So loads of credentials. Now, a lot of people, um, Chloe, may not know what is craniosacral Qigong. I mean, that, it sounds like something new that's been created. So tell us a little bit about what the heck it is? <laughs> yes, it is. It is spontaneous, actually, the way it has manifested in my life. And I presented my work for the first time on the blending of uh, cranial sacral with Qigong in 1997 wow. at the American World Congress on Qigong, which was the first American World Congress on Qigong. And so my teacher, uh, Dr. John O'Bledger, who had invited me to join his core staff, yeah. to work with his patients because he was getting very busy and teaching and writing and and so but he always had a core team around him and so he invited me to work with him in 1995 and I already had started studying medical medical qigong and so I started seeing the correspondence the correlation the similarities between craniosacral therapy and medical qigong. But well, it's really craniosacral osteopathy because I was an osteopath at that point. Yeah. So right away at that moment, I mean, at that time when I started, when I was an osteopath, a young osteopath, and I was looking for help for my son who had been diagnosed with an incurable illness by the medical modern Western medicine and was telling us there's nothing we can do for for your son. Yeah. Life is going to be short. Yeah. And so just let him have a good life because there's nothing we can do. And, and, and I felt that there was something more that needed to be happening in, in our lives. I didn't quite know what it was. Yeah. Went to Osteopathy College and uh, back to France to be with my family so my family could help me with uh, raising my children. And so when I came back to America with my children, who were American, born in America, um, uh, then craniosacral and medical Qigong came into my lab at the same time, mm -hmm. just graduating from craniosacral, I mean, from osteopathy. Yeah. And, and, and during, during my training as an osteopath, uh, in France, in England, in France, it, uh, it's, it was a Franco-English college, very, very pioneer. I've been really trained by pioneers. And they were teaching us cranial osteopathy. Mm. So for me, that resonated because, you know, with Dorian, it's a neuromuscular illness that I was diagnosed with. And so there was nothing that could be done on a physical level. There was more that I was looking for to be able to help Dorian. And, and really, this is what resonated the most for me to help him and also for me, for myself. Yeah. To be able and to... I'm going to pause you for a second, just before we go sort of down that path. I think for our listeners, a lot of people won't know what cr craniosacral therapy is at all or medical Qigong or what they mean together. So if you could just give us sort of the Coles Notes version about it, so people at least can have some context about what, what the heck it is we're talking about. <laughs> okay. So, and also... People need to understand that those definitions have changed already, okay? okay. I will start with the oldest tree, okay. which is Qigong. And medical Qigong goes back thousands of years of transmission from master to student. Many people know about Tai Chi today. 
Yeah. Right. Because it's been coming to America, and I always everybody has seen the beautiful uh, flowing motion of Tai yeah. Chi. You know, people get in the in the park in the morning and then practice Tai Chi together. So Tai Tai Chi is a is a martial art form of uh, Qigong or Chinese energetic medicine. So medical Qigong is very much a medical aspect, while Tai Chi is more martial art. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's a difference, basically. And there's also a spiritual Qigong, like Buddhism and Confucianism, uh, also uh, practices, but more on a spiritual level. So there's a spiritual, the martial, and the medical, basically. It's the three forms of Qigong. And I've always been, of course, interested in medicine, even before my, my son was born. As a kid, I was always interested in medicine. My whole family knew there was going to be something for me to yeah. do as medicine. So that's that's for the Qigong. And it's basically a practice that we do for ourselves to access the Qi and the vitality. And um, so that's Qigong. And craniosacral, it's, I want to, I call it craniosacral works or craniosacral therapeutics because there's a lot more than craniosacral therapy, which is pretty much what mainstream is today. Mm-hmm. Craniosacral works is basically a very gentle uh, touch technique, which facilitates the, the the flow of the the core link intelligence, and specifically the that that addresses the brain and spinal cord and its related structures, which are the meninges that surround this whole system as one unit from the cranium to the sacrum yeah meninges surround this whole tube we call it the dual tube because the dual matter is the outer membrane and right underneath the dual matter is where the cerebral spinal fluid is cerebral brain spinal spine so this fluid is right underneath the dual matter yeah. and so the dual matter is 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 what we are focusing on and hopefully because not too many people cannot access this it takes years to really okay. to, so that's pretty much you know and and because it's a calling mm-hmm. intelligence and the central nervous system brain and spinal cord and and by addressing and facilitating good health of the system then we can help the person you know heal or, or just access a, a better vitality and and health and so that's when you can see the relationship between craniosacral and Qigong. Yeah. It's sort of the, the same idea of facilitating the good health of the body. And when we facilitate the good health of the body, the body can heal all kinds of stuff yeah, versus you know, giving medication and just kind of not addressing the inherent ability of the body to heal. Okay. Now you write about a transformative experience that you had in your 20s. Is that, was that the birth of your son or what, what was that experience? I'm so glad you asked me. You read my book. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Leary in Harvard was one of the pioneers to do all kind of research on LSD and, you know, the, the mind altering drugs and everything. That's not what my experience was about. It was about understanding that for my, for my healing, and I had figured that at an early age, that I need to be away from the world. Mm-hmm own little place comfortable and do some personal work to be able to heal i figured this out because i discovered on the power of breath work when i was you know very little and meditation so i had had some conflicts and i just realized that i need to go back to that place and be alone Mm -hmm. and yes i had an experience that transformed me completely because at the end of this experience, I had the message that, and I was in my 20s, that I would be a master amongst masters. And that because I got so much information downloaded to me, and there was no physical teacher, I was by myself. And but I was not by myself, because there were teachers who were downloading me with information, but not heavily, just enough for me to actually to tap into some really people call Akashic records or, you know, there's all kind of information now today. At that time, there were a lot of people having all kind of experiences, you know, this way. It was like a a breakthrough of consciousness where people were just like breaking through matrices that had been so confining, you know, consciousness. And people were just like, some of us 
had to break through because we knew inside that it was confining and, and there was more to us than the world was really wanted us to believe. That in a nutshell, what happened to me. Okay, beautiful. And it's, uh, it's gorgeous when we have these awakenings and how they can shift us. And I'd love, I know like Western medicine sent, seems to take a much more narrow view and we're starting to see more appreciation for some of you want to call it the Eastern or just different approaches. What tips do you have for our listeners about advocating for themselves and their loved ones? You know, how to negotiate past the conditioning that stops us from questioning about our health care. You're going to be curious, mm. number one. And today there's all kind of, possibility of doing research with Google's, you know, we have browsers, you know, possibilities of, of finding more about, you know, if you've given a, a, a one one of the most important lessons that I had received uh, by Master Benway Her, with whom I studied, he had been uh, nominated the Master of the Year of the Third World Congress on Qigong, and I was just like, called to follow him and to work with him because his chi was so strong, his presence was so strong. That was before he was um, named the master of the year. And he said to us, his students, he said, if you have been given a diagnosis, send it back to the doctor who give it to you. Mm. Because having a diagnosis and owning to the diagnosis is admitting the limit of the possibility of breaking through mm. and he'll pass this. <laughs> and that's what we did. It's like brilliant. Yeah. And we spoke back to the doctor who had been giving Dorian, my son, the the, the diagnosis of muscular dystrophy and his life was gonna yeah. be in this teenies. You know, we, we were not gonna believe this anymore. Yeah. That's why yeah. it would be curious and, and not to be stuck in a belief that someone wants to impose upon you. Yeah. Well, and I want to dig into that. I think that's such a so key what you've just said, that role that mindset plays, right? And ironically, I was just speaking to somebody today, totally unconnected to this, not on an interview. And they were talking about somebody that they knew who had been diagnosed with cancer and was undergoing chemo treatments. And while she was getting the chemo treatments, she just sent and allowed this absolute unshakable conviction that this was something that was going to be positive and powerfully good for her and ended up not having any of the normal symptomology that you get, no hair loss, none of the kinds of things uh, that you'd appreciate. So I'd love if you could talk to what role does mindset play in negotiating our personal health care? And that's beautiful. I, I love the way you ask it and you put it together. It's so right because it is a mindset. And, uh, okay, in medical Qigong, one of the rules of medical Qigong is yi, the mind, leads the chi. The mind leads the energy. Yeah. And then, uh -huh. actually, it goes even further than that. It's, you know, so in other words, the belief, yeah, which is the imagination. The imagination leads the mind that leads the chi. So okay. if the mind believes that the doctor knows everything and that's the you know, all and end all and there's nothing more to it, which was could have been what I would have been with my with Dorian, yeah. yes. except nothing about it, that was not satisfactory for me. Yeah. I continued and 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 so so the creative part of us is such an important part of who we yeah. are. Yeah. And from that we can manifest and you know tap into some you know, incredible abilities that we may not even suspect that we have to really transform the mind and the energy that it's going to guide, you know, the the, the circuitry, the pathways. That's why I call my book Pathways, Consciousness Power, because this, we're full of those pathways. You know how the, the neurons connect, the synapses, all those pathways. But if there's a belief, a false belief, I call it a false belief, you know, that we attach to, or oh, the, the, the environment or the, the family, where Wiz, you know, just wants to to stick with this, then it's very difficult for us to to break through that. And that's yeah. kind of what I broke through in that experience in my time yeah. space. Yeah. And it's such a powerful message. And again, for our listeners, I really want to put a pin in that believing we are so conditioned to have these narrow views, very narrow, constrictive views about our abilities and capacities. And our brain is capable of so much more. Our energies, everything is energy. Our energies are capable of so much more. And I'd love if you could speak to for a moment, Chloe, what role emotion plays in this process and in negotiating our health care. Yeah, which is emotion is also an is, is you know, I like the definition of emotion as energy, motion, mm -hmm. energy in motion. 
Yeah, nice. Yeah. So if the if the energy is not moving, then it's stuck somewhere. It's yeah. a it's frozen. It's you know creating a a dysfunction somewhere. Energy needs to move, and by yeah. the finish, you know, we are like I said, it's all about energy. Yeah. So if the energy gets stuck or constricted, then the emotion cannot really flow. And, and it's so important to be able to work with the emotion. That is cheap, really, to flow. Yeah. And that's why I like to watch the practice, because see, in craniosacral therapy, the Oplinger uh, model, the advanced part of cranio, advanced teaching, should I say, of craniosacral is somato emotional release yeah. somato body emotional release yeah. releasing the emotions under the body in medical qigong we actually have meditations that we can do to facilitate the flow of energy so the energy doesn't get stuck yeah and so that's also why you know i like to teach qigong to my client my students my patients so that the energy doesn't get stuck yeah. and the energy can continue to flow, you know, yeah. and the energy, because emotions are part of who we are. Yeah. And well, you know, and I'm when... so sensitive to this because, you know, as you may know, like my daughter had to have open heart surgery as a, at two months old and everything that could go wrong did. And none of the experts believe she was going to survive. Right. I mean, it was just, and I had this absolute unshakable belief that she was going to be okay. Like I, I did not entertain, did not allow myself to entertain the possibility that she was not going to make it. And, uh, and that's probably a nice lead in as well to, if you can share with us about your son, like, it, you know, you've already shared that they gave him a diagnosis that he would have very little chance of having any longevity at all in his life with the traditional medicine model. So tell us uh, how these, these sort of different approaches, if you will, beyond their Western medical healthcare system. What was the impact of that for you and your son? So because they were pretty much, you know, letting us know that his life was going to be short, not past teenage years, it was like the, the sword of Damocles, even though we had not at, attached to the pro, uh, diagnosis, yeah. there was still the prognosis. You know? The diagnosis is the definition of a disease. Yeah. The prognosis is that mean there's chances are, great that his life is going to be short and so once he passed 18 and he graduated from uh, high school and went went to college we were like oh 19 <laughs> you know you're going to college <laughs> and and we, we, there was a sense of joy that we started feeling it's like why are we going to be holding on to a future when we can be fully happy now. <laughs> yes. Really full of joy for enjoying <laughs> the moment to be together. And that really shifted a lot, yeah. you know, in our lives. And Dorian was a very funny, happy yeah. <laughs> young man. And, 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 you know, always kids, you know, he was just a crippled sense of humor. Yeah. And, we always had a good time. I mean, you know, we didn't let any of this get in our way. We had a good time. And I was a single mother, too, on top of that. Yeah. Wow. It was very little family because the family couldn't really understand my drive. Yeah. yeah. Move forward. And the teachers coming and were working with us, but not much to the family. So it was pretty much single mother with my two children. I have yeah. a daughter. But we always had a good time. We were laughing yeah. all the time. I mean, really, really laughing because both my children have such an incredible sense of humor and they're very smart. So Doreen graduated from college, from FAU, Florida Atlantic University, magna cum laude. Wow. And he, he was not even 22. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And pretty much lived on his own. I mean, I was always, you know, making sure that he was, but he really managed his own life and he wanted that for himself. We looked at the disability because it was basically a physical disability that he was suffering from. Or that yeah. was, it was under suffer because there's no pain. It was in the way, okay? The, the, yeah. the, the day was in the way because we had to figure out the wheelchair and the people to help yeah. and the proper vehicles. And, you know, there was all those components that we had to orchestrate for his life. But ultimately, you know, we we always had a good time because we didn't let any of this get in our way. And if anything, there's one thing that was really bothering Dorian 
is when people would look at him like because it was a wheelchair, I was like, yeah. you're like pulling this pout face, like poor guy. You know, they didn't understand that we were just that was just it's just like his muscle didn't work, his brain was working very well. Yeah. And also all of his health, he was a very healthy guy. Yeah. You know, so that's why people is difficult to understand. Well, how can he be healthy? You know, was yeah. was you know what it's it's that's why we, we, we have a, a, a wrong understanding of what health is. You know, and health is really to be able to express who we are, yes. you know, all dimensions of our being, you know, with the gift that we've been given. It's not comparing ourselves to someone else. It's just being who we are. Yeah. That's what Dorian represents, really. So he passed when he was just about to be 32. Wow. And he was completely healthy. Yes. That's what people can understand. Yeah. How can yeah. And well, I want to really circle back, put a pin in that for our listeners again, that mindset shift. And I, I invite you to really think about that because we are a society that when we speak of health, we are so obsessively focused only on the physical health and mm -hmm. we don't consider mental health. And today, particularly in post-COVID, the range of mental health, I mean, it's much, it's like our physical health. Some days we'll have good, you know, mental health and some days less good mental health and being able to recognize that and coming back to that mindset, the power of mindset, the power of our beliefs, the power of joy, as Chloe has described. And also the one thing you didn't mention the, the word other than how you've described, but the power of love. And again, the same person I was speaking to today about the woman with the chemo told about a study, and I'm going to look it up as soon as we're uh, done here, about a study that was done about dealing with carcinogens. And they were giving bunny rabbits in this study, intentionally putting carcinogenic stuff on the lettuce to see about the development of cancer. And of all of the rabbits, one of the students who was involved in the study, his rabbits were getting the same amount of the carcinogens and were thriving, were incredibly healthy rabbits. And they challenged him thinking he actually wasn't doing what he was supposed to. And it turned out, he said, I felt so bad about doing this study. I wanted to just surround them with love. So I would take them out every day and pour, pour love into these rabbits. And the impact for them of that was that the carcinogens did not have the same impact on them because the rabbits received it this is coming from a place of love. Therefore, it must be good for us. So don't <laughs> underestimate the power of that mindset. And I, I can't believe how quickly our, our conversation has gone here, Chloe. One of the things I normally like to end with is what is one of the greatest mindset shifts that you've had in your life? And it doesn't even have to be on this topic that we're talking about. Just one of those moments that changes how you look at things. Oh, that's a tough one. I would say reciprocity. Mm. That when you met with the right or the proper reciprocity and that's proprioception you know that's that's i think that's the evolution of mankind yeah. if we are receiving the right feedback and the right uh, uh, help support at the right time and right place by right people yeah. th that opens up new new doors and then we, we can see the the the, the, the progression of, of moving yeah. forward i think yeah. that that's really what it's about the reciprocity oh, and the beautiful beautiful i love that yeah. On so many levels, actually, that reciprocity as well. Like when we show up as the best version of ourselves, it tends to trigger that reciprocity and other people show up. It, it all comes back to what you've been talking about, that energy, right? The energy we put out is the energy that we will get cycled back. Such a beautiful message. So where can people learn more about you, Dr. Chloe? ChloeCouture.com. That's a good start, uh, I would say. Um, I have also my book, Cranio Seco Qigong. That com. It's a lot of words, but they can find it <laughs> to my into my website, chloecouturier.com. That's Beautiful. the best. Yes. And we'll make sure to put that on the, in our show notes as well, so that if you guys want to follow up on this, learn a little bit more about it, check out what Dr. Chloe offers. We'll make sure that you've got access to that, uh, as well as the name of the book. Do uh, We always encourage you as well, when somebody's put their heart and soul into something that can be a game changer, make sure you give the opportunity to check it out. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a really interesting approach, and I really hope our listeners take it to heart and open up their minds and hearts to thinking outside the box. So thanks, Chloe. Thank you, Cindy, for your reciprocity. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Look at how you did that. That was great. Thank you. And for our listeners, I hope you got tons of value from this episode. And as I say, I really invite you to go away and maybe even re-listen to it with an absolutely open mind and considering where you can apply this in your life. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. And as always, I can encourage you, give the gift of sharing. 
Uh, if this is a message that someone in your life, if they're struggling with a health issue, maybe they don't advocate for themselves, maybe they've got themselves stuck in a mindset that doesn't serve them, definitely give the gift of sharing this episode so that they can step up and get more out of life and open up their energies to lead a more joyful, full life. And just before we sign off today, I want to share some ways we can work together. If you're looking to up-level your negotiation skills, I've got everything from online to VIP and one-on-one uh, -on -one mastermind experiences for you so that you can better leverage your innate power to get more of what you want and deserve in life. And if that sounds interesting to you, to check out our website at artoffemininenegotiation.com. And speaking of the Art of Feminine Negotiation, I hope you've grabbed a copy of my book. If you have not, please be sure to do that as well. The Art of Feminine Negotiation, available at a bookstore close to you. Ask for it if they don't have it, or you can grab it on Amazon. And that is a wrap for this episode. So until next time, I encourage you to go forth and negotiate your best life on your terms so you can stop missing out and start getting more of what you want and deserve from the boardroom to the bedroom. Until next time, take care.